Good morning. Uh, I'm New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, and uh, I thank you for joining me today for an important announcement about my office's ongoing investigation into a massive, long-running fraud perpetrated on tens of thousands of New Yorkers, resulting in very serious damage to our environment by Volkswagen and uh, all affiliated companies. The, uh, the work on this investigation, which began last year, has been done by quite a few lawyers in our office. I'm pleased to be joined by several of the leaders of the team uh, who've worked uh, tirelessly on this matter. Uh, David Nachman, Senior Enforcement Counsel, Lisa Burianic, my, the Deputy Bureau Chief of my Environmental Protection Bureau, and Assistant Attorneys General uh, Noah Pop and John Turatini. Ladies and gentlemen, between 2008 and 2015, Volkswagen and its subsidiaries sold New Yorkers more than 25,000 cars with emission systems that were not what Volkswagen claimed them to be. VW claimed that the diesel engines on these vehicles were, quote, clean and, quote, green. They even made the supposedly environmental friendly emissions from these vehicles a primary selling point in their marketing efforts. These cars and SUVs were anything but clean and green. Volkswagen had secretly installed so-called defeat devices to improve the cleanness and greenness of their diesel vehicles during emissions tests and only during emissions tests. When the cars actually got out on the road, they spewed significantly more noxious pollutants, as much as 15 to 35 times higher than the legal limits. The defeat devices hid the fact that the vehicles did not come close to them complying with state and federal emission standards. The harm to consumers from this deceit was substantial. Suddenly, through no fault of their own, tens of thousands of New Yorkers found themselves stuck in cars and SUVs that wouldn't pass New York emissions tests. And the damage to our environment was substantial. Tens of thousands of additional tons of harmful pollutants were released into our air. These pollutants are linked to asthma and other uh, respiratory diseases, especially for those living close to major roads and highways. Uh, nitrogen oxides and fine particulate matter are soot being the most dangerous uh, emissions that uh, Volkswagen was covering up. Uh, last September, my office opened an investigation to VW's deception, and as I said at the time, no company uh, is allowed to evade our environmental laws, and no company is allowed to commit fraud against the hardworking men and women of New York State. Today's settlement is really an unprecedented step towards getting restitution for those consumers and fixing the damage done to our environment by VW's complex and really devious fraudulent scheme. The U.S. Department of Justice, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Federal Trade Commission, car owners, and a coalition of more than 40 state attorneys general work together to craft an agreement that addresses some of the most serious legal issues raised by Volkswagen's conduct. All told to date, Volkswagen has committed to set aside $15 billion to compensate consumers and mitigate the damage they cause to the environment and to pay penalties to states for false and deceptive marketing. Thanks to this partial settlement, because it is not a full settlement of all claims against Volkswagen, but thanks to this partial settlement, car owners will be able to sell their cars back to Volkswagen at the price they were worth before the emissions scandal broke last fall. Plus, they'll get at least $5,000 on top of that. The precise amount varies according to the model making configuration of the car, basically the value of the vehicle. And as an alternative, if Volkswagen is able to modify its emission systems back to a level approved by the EPA, car owners will have the option of keeping their cars and demanding that VW modify the emission system and still receive at least $5,000 in cash compensation. So uh, consumers have two options. They can either take the buyback or they can take the fix. In either case, they get, they get the money. This is really unprecedented for a settlement of a case like this. For its deceptive marketing practices, uh, Volkswagen is also going to pay to the states an additional $1,100 per car, or over half a billion dollars nationwide. Um, and under the terms of the settlement reached by the multi-state coalition, which my office organized and helped lead, that translates to more than $30 million in penalties coming straight to New York State. In addition to this relief, Volkswagen has committed to paying $2.7 billion into an environmental mitigation fund to be split among the states, including more than $115 million that will be coming to New York. 
That fund is going to help pay for diesel engine replacements, retrofit projects, or other measures to reduce harmful emissions and improve the quality of our air here in New York and, and really all across the country. Um, that means that New York State can pay to replace old diesel engines in our garbage trucks, school buses, or update obsolete machinery in our ports like cranes and tugboats. Um, and if, in addition to this consumer relief and in addition to the $2.7 billion, Volkswagen has agreed to invest $2 billion more over the next de decade to develop zero emission electric vehicles and the infrastructure to support them. So this is an impressive settlement. It is an unprecedented settlement, but it is not the end of our investigation of Volkswagen or of our commitment to hold Volkswagen accountable for its unlawful conduct. The deception in this case runs deep. The culture of corruption and cover-up in this enterprise run, ran deep. In today's settlement, Volkswagen admits that it installed these defeat devices, uh, never told regulators about them, and certainly never told consumers about them. Back in September of last year, the then president and CEO of Volkswagen Group of America said it directly. At the time, um, he said, quote, let's be clear about this. Our company was dishonest with the EPA and with all of you. In my German words, we have totally screwed up, end quote. Now, that admission is great, but it's not enough. Um, my office is continuing to investigate this complex multi-year fraud uh, that appears to have involved uh, decision makers at every level of the leadership of this massive multinational conglomerate. Um, ladies and gentlemen, today's settlement is a welcome and important step forward, but it is by no means the end. It does not in any way waive or limit the ability of my office to seek additional penalties from Volkswagen for its violation of state environmental laws, nor does it limit any of my counterparts, other attorneys general in other states. What we have uncovered so far points to a culture of corporate arrogance and a conscious regard for the rule of law uh, that we will continue to pursue. And the state of New York will continue to seek relief for Volkswagen's deliberate decision to disregard the environmental laws of New York and the United States. We will continue to seek penalties that are substantial enough to ensure that Volkswagen or any other car manufacturer will never again attempt this type of deception. Uh, our investigation continues, uh, our search for answers continues, and our drive for accountability will continue to move forward. So thank you for joining me here today. We're pleased to announce this important step. And Matt Mittenthal will now open the floor to questions. Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, so, uh, Mr. Attorney General, how, oh, I'm sorry, Rich Lamb, WCBS. How, um, how does a, a consumer go about applying for relief here? So th this, uh, the settlement has to be approved by the judge. Uh, we expect by the fall consumers will, will, will have the, the relief will be available to them. There's a website that has been created for consumers. Anyone who thinks they may own a car that is uh, uh, covered under the settlement should go to www.vwcourtsettlement.com, www.vwcourtsettlement.com, and, uh, and you can find out. But we certainly are encouraging everyone in New York to take advantage of this, and uh, we'll keep people apprised as, as the process wends its way through the court. Yeah, this is, this is a remarkable settlement. It's an unprecedented settlement, but quite frankly, uh, th this is an unprecedented multi-year scheme to create multiple devices to commit fraud uh, that, as I said, involve decision-making at every level of this huge multinational conglomerate. It is uh, reflective of a, a culture of corruption, and uh, this is a lot of money, uh, but they understand that, in the words of their former president, they screwed up, and this still doesn't resolve uh, any of our state environmental claims, so there will be more to come. Uh, they're open to substantial liability for penalties for violation of state environmental laws. I don't know exactly how many other attorneys general are going to be pursuing this, but uh, my office certainly is. Well, 
Well, th this was uh, something that came out due to some work that was done at uh, in West Virginia that, that revealed that this, these devices were defeat devices. Then there was further evidence uncovered by uh, a California regulatory entity, and it and it broke out in the open. And by last fall, they acknowledged uh, they acknowledged it. But since then, we have been digging further and learning more about the decisions that were made. Understand, this involved multiple vehicles over mo over many years. This involved different Volkswagen models, Audis. Uh, it was a complex conspiracy that involved a lot of people knowingly participating in the fraud. And so uh, the, they are still facing substantial exposure. Well, it, it, as I said, the, there were a lot of pollutants, specifically nitrogen oxides and fine particulate matter or soot, that uh, the defeat devices uh, enabled the cars to generate that, that if they had been uh, actually in compliance with emission standards, wouldn't have been generated. So this, uh, these particular pollutants are related to uh, respiratory infections. If you're in an area around a highway, uh, and we know that this it relates to particularly a lot of poorer communities where there, there's a lot of traffic, truck traffic, and, and other traffic. Uh, this, is, this is serious stuff. This was a lot of pollution over a period of time. The mitigation fund is large, uh, and as was pointed out, this is a lot of money, but this was a lot of pollution over quite a few years. It's actually it's actually a little better than blue book value. Uh, it's it's um, uh, it's it, it, it's uh, a different standard that's set into the agreement, but it is a little bit better than blue book value plus the additional five thousand as to as much as ten thousand dollars, depending on the value of the vehicle, the making configuration of the car. Well, no, they're, I mean, they obviously they've, uh, uh, they have to f fix a lot of cars and they have to, their conduct going forward is, is going to have to change. It's going to uh, have a disruptive effect on, on their business, that's for sure. Uh, and there are, uh, there, you know, the possibility of individual liability has not been foreclosed by the settlement in any way. So we continue to investigate. Keep in mind, that uh, they sold a lot more cars in Europe than they did in the U.S. There are European investigations ongoing, as well as investigations by my office, other states, and by my federal counterparts. The Department of Environmental Protection in, of the state is going to be handling the mitigation fund. Certainly, uh, they are very cognizant of the communities that have suffered, but it's going to, um, this is going to enable us to reduce, uh, reduce the levels of pollution substantially in all areas, but er obviously areas where there's higher traffic will be affected uh, more than areas where there's not much traffic. Thank you.